So you might not remember me, but for those of you that do, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So where have I been the last few weeks? The only vlog that I've managed to get out in the last few weeks was my live so long just over a week ago. And yeah, I have attempted to film a vlog numerous times and got so far and then just not managed to finish it. But there's been a lot going off. Shay stitched up for the last few weeks. I have been really poorly and I thought I had COVID but all my tests were coming back negative and then Martin got COVID last week. Um, he's currently unwell still. He's day eight today and yeah it's not been great to be honest. So it's just not happened. So I'm really sorry about that but I'm back today anyway and it is Wednesday evening. I've been at work all day. I am exhausted. I'm really tired so I'm sorry if I look pretty grim. Um, my hair's a mess but you know I've been at work all day. In fact, I've been at work for six, seven days now. No, it's longer than that. It's nine days. Yeah. My last day off was a week last Sunday and I've been at work since. And I've had about four 12, 13 hour days interspersed amongst that. So you can imagine what I'm feeling. So tonight, guys, I'm afraid it's porn star martini time. Um, yes. So uh, I've got one more day tomorrow and then something very exciting is happening on Friday, which I'll tell you about. But before that, I thought I would come on, do a bit of a chatty vlog and a bit of a catch up with you all, show you some fabrics from, no, yes, I will show you some fabrics, but I was gonna show you some makes that I got done in March. We're in April now, aren't we? I'm sorry for the plants that you can see in the background here. This is, uh, my daughter's got me into house plants. She's absolutely amazing with them, to be honest. I can't look after them, but she, puts me right all the time so anyway got a few house plants now which is quite nice it's looking a bit jungle-esque in my conservatory I am in my conservatory today filming here and the reason for that is because a the sewing room is an absolute mess b at this time of the of night there's not a lot of daylight in the sewing room and c the last few times I have filmed in there with my fabric as a bit of a backdrop a few of you have mentioned and I've seen it myself that the camera it keeps focusing on the fabric instead of me and I have set up my camera settings manually so it's not on autofocus anymore it's on a manual focus I've set everything up properly so it should be focusing on me and for whatever reason it's not and I don't understand why that's happening so yeah um sorry about that but hopefully here it should be focusing on me because it's a bit more of a plain background anyway yeah so that's where we're at so it's Wednesday evening and what have I got to tell you? I am tired, really tired and I've got one more day at work and then on Friday I have got really exciting, exciting news because do you remember back at the end of January, both myself, Ruan who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Tamlin who is Sewing on the Tyne all met up in Leeds for a little shindig and we had the day together, we did fabric shopping, we had cocktails, we had lunch in the Ivy, it was a really lovely day. And it was the first time that we'd met up and we got on like a house on fire and we stayed friends since then. We chat regularly and you know, it's, it's great. It's one of the bonuses of the sewing community, isn't it? I've met some great people through the sewing community and made some really good friends. Um, Sean being one from Kittish Behaviour, Judy being another, Andy who is from um, from Cornwall and yeah and it, it's great and to sort of meet up with Ruan and Tamlin as I say we got on really well those of you that watched the vlog about that we each put out a vlog about that at the time I will link to it down below so you can go and have a look and we said that what we would like to do is make it a sort of not a regular thing that we do but you know occasionally meet up and we have arranged to meet up again on Friday this time we're meeting up in Tamlin's hometown of Newcastle and uh, yeah it's really exciting we're gonna have a really nice day hopefully so um, fingers crossed this time I won't miss the train home which would be a nightmare in Newcastle because that's quite a distance further than Leeds is to my home and uh, yeah I don't think Martin would be best pleased if I rung him at some ungodly hour saying I've missed my train come and get me but uh, yeah fingers crossed I will get the train home this time I'm sure Rowan and Tamlin will put me right but yeah really looking forward to that I think it's going to be great and uh, Tamlin if you don't know already has started doing some meetups 
well like like sewing social days and she does them on i think it's alternate wednesday afternoons up in newcastle and then once a month on a sunday for a longer period of time as well and uh, yeah we're looking at arranging to go up and take part in that in july i think it is so i think judy's coming as well which will be really good and myself and um, ruan and that's going to be great because I haven't done anything like that for a long time. In other news, I am also really looking forward to, in a couple of weeks' time, going down to the Isle of Wight again to see the lovely Sean from Kidnish Behaviour. She is running her sewing retreat and yeah that's going to be awesome that's been put off for two years now it's been well it's been two and a half years since i was last down there i can't believe it's been two and a half years that's flown by because of the pandemic as we all know that put a stop to lots of things and the sewing retreat was obviously one of those things that kept getting postponed and delayed etc and finally it is going ahead in the beginning of may and i'm just in the process now we know what pattern we're making and I'm in the process of getting everything together to make the Annette bag by Swoon Patterns. I'll put a picture of that here, but it's going to be slightly tweaked from this version. And um, yeah, that's really exciting. It's going to be great fun because I absolutely loved it when I've been before. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her again because I've not seen her. Um, we chat frequently, but I've not seen her since then. And it's just, yeah, incredible. So anyway, that's my news. Um, this weekend after friday on sunday martin and i are going down to london for a few days which is exciting because i've not been to london for a couple of years as well and i'm really looking forward to that we're going to a concert sunday evening and then we are having afternoon tea at the ritz one of the days i want to go to the vna because i've never been and um, possibly liberties as well i don't think we'll get time to go to the gold heart road i don't think i need to to be honest well i don't need to do i because i've got you know enough fabric to last me three or four lifetimes to be fair but it would be nice to go but i think yeah i think we'll go to liberties i'd like to go to liberties i've been once before and it's just such a beautiful building so i might do some filming while i'm there hopefully fingers crossed if i can get myself back into vlogging again that would be really good uh, for those of you that haven't seen much of um, our capital and um, yeah I'm looking forward to that as well so we're going down on Sunday for a few days and then we come home I'm back at work for a couple of weeks I think then I go to the retreat then I'm back home for a week and then we go to Portugal and it's just all go at the minute there's so much on but it, I'm really looking forward to it because I have just worked solidly now since Christmas and I've not had any time off at all and I've been ill during this time I've been doing so many hours and I am ready for a break beyond ready for a break so I'm really looking forward to a little bit of relaxation and downtime and a bit of um yeah just a bit of enjoyment social enjoyment is the word or the phrase I think so anyway this Pond Star Martini is uh, calling to me. Mm. So, what else have I got to tell you? I have been sewing. I've not been doing a great deal because work, basically. But when I have had a bit of time, I have done some sewing. And looking back to March, March was all about tops for me. I had to get loads of tops made because... I needed them to wear for work really so I thought I would just quickly show you the ones I have made I might have mentioned in my March plans that I was doing a pattern test and it was actually for the Whitcomb top which is a gorgeous little top by Soul of Patterns and yes I did the pattern test for them and I'll put some pictures in here of the, the, the finished top that I made I think I have shown you this before, but then I did make another version and I made it out of double gauze because, well, why not really? And um, I, I loved this top so much that I just immediately wanted to make another. I'm just sort of fighting with my coat hanger at the minute to put this on the coat hanger so you can see. But anyway, have I got this the right way? Which is the right way? This is the right way. That's why it's not hanging properly. Now, it's a lovely top. I really like it and I made it in this beautiful little double gauze. I've made the cropped version, so it's got an elasticated waist, it has big poofy sleeves, 
three quarter length with elastic in no it doesn't have elastic it's just like a binding and it's in this beautiful beautiful double gauze which is navy with silver metallic dots on it it has a little bit of gathering at the front neckline it's raglan sleeved and uh, yeah what can i say it's really pretty it's exactly the same as the top that you've just you will have just seen it in this picture so i i'm really sorry i'm not going to try this on i'm not going to try any of these things on tonight because i haven't had a chance to take any pictures because it's just been horrible weather the last two weeks now and any time that i've had when i've been able to take photos the weather's just been rubbish so i'm really sorry you're just gonna have to see them on the hanger but I'm sure you don't mind and can forgive me on this occasion so i will get around to taking some pictures at some point and i will either stick them in the facebook group if you're not part of my facebook group i will leave the links to that down in the description box below so you can go and join please make sure if you do apply to join our facebook group you must accept and agree the terms to gain entry and um, please don't ignore them because if you do we won't we won't let you in it's as simple as that so it's nothing you know nothing onerous we're not asking for access to your bank account or anything like that it's simply just about being fair and kind and courteous and the usual nice things that we all love when we're in little groups and uh, yes that will get you in to my facebook group but i will probably put pictures in of my march makes in there and maybe I'll take some pictures and put them on Instagram at some point when I have some time as well. But I love this top. It's a very quick make. There's different versions of it. You can make it in a woven or a jersey, which is fantastic. And it gives you the instructions on how to... Um, well, it's got different pattern pieces, actually. And there's various, various different versions of this top that you can make. I will leave a link to it down below because the lovely Johanna has released this. It's a proper pattern for you to go and purchase now. And uh, yeah, it's a fab top, definitely a staple. So that was one of the items that I made in a, a no, not in April. I made it, we're in April now, aren't we? I made it in, made it in March. Um, next up, the sew along that I did in March was for the Frida Blouse by, tell you as you I had to think I had to think then guys because my mind is a mess at the minute because I'm so tired believe me I am so 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 tired and um anyway yes we made the Frida blouse by Atelier Jupe and it's a gorgeous gorgeous pattern I really understand how the lovely Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door uh, I understand why she makes so many of these because it is a really really lovely pattern so I made it in this lovely Lady McElroy cotton lawn that I got from Sherwoods it's called looking good and I will leave it down below so you can go and check it out it's got I'm sorry it's a bit creased Martin did the ironing for me bless him but he's not as good as me um he's doing his best bless him while he's off and I'm at work he's doing his best so I got these little buttons, which I had to quickly nip out to my local boys to find some buttons on the afternoon when this was going to be the live sew along because I suddenly realized I'd got no buttons to match this. And I did manage to get this finished during the live sew along. I have fully lined the yoke inside with cotton lawn, just some white cotton lawn from Mustache. And I've just noticed there's like a little, um, few loose threads there but I'll sort that out later again it's a three-quarter length sleeve gorgeous gorgeous shirt and I really like it love it so I will definitely be making more of these it's a fabulous fabulous blouse and it's you know it's got some nice little touches which is is great next up in March these are obviously no order of make to be honest but it's it's just on the little pile here that I've got in front of me. I also made the Paddington top by Peppermint Magazine. That's the one. Peppermint Magazine. The Paddington top, which is a button up blouse, but it buttons up at the back. And again, it's made for woven patterns. It's a free pattern. And I know lots of people during the So Frugal 22 challenge made this top and again it's gorgeous a really lovely top i made this from some viscose that i got in so Haley jane box this is it here it is very short and i will need to lengthen this for my next version um this is a cuffed sleeve top as i say this um 
viscose was from a so Haley jane box it's very pretty it's not something that i would have normally chosen if i was going to buy it but i'm really pleased with it i really like it now i will show you the back but don't judge me is all i'm saying i was tired when i made this and my pattern matching is absolutely on point guys look at that pattern matching i am just knocking it out of the park aren't i yeah um i don't know what happened but you know at the end of the day when i'm wearing this it buttons up at the back so i can't see it and that's fine um buttons i use these little wooden heart buttons that were in my button stash and i think they go okay to be honest so it's a great pattern love it as I say, the biggest thing is that it's just too short. It only just hits me on my natural waist, so it does look a bit cropped. So, for future, I will add a couple of inches onto it, at least, and then it will be perfect for me. It's gorgeous. Really like it. Very similar to the Anthea blouse, which I just happen to have one of those here as well, because I made that back in March as well. And so this is a pattern by... Anthea Allen. No, Anna Allen. It's really confusing. I know a few people do this. They call it either the Anna by Anthea Allen or the Anthea by Anna Allen. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, anyway, it is the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen Clothing. And this is very similar to the Paddington top in some respects in the fact that it, um, it again, it's a woven pattern with big poofy sleeves that has a binding and, but this one buttons up at the front, not the back. It has a slight sort of swing feel to it. And then it has, the sleeves are huge to be honest. And it has like gathering around the sleeves, around most of the sleeve. It's literally just the underarm bit where it doesn't have any gathering at all. So that's quite a unique feature. This is a beautiful cotton linen fabric with seashells and lobsters on because why not? And I think I got this I'm thinking I got this from Minerva. Again, I use buttons from my stash. Um, they are cream plastic. Again, don't judge me, please. Please, guys, don't judge me. They were in my stash, so I'm using things that were already there. I didn't go out and buy these. They go okay. They're not the best buttons in the world. I get that, but, you know, I wanted to use them, and I think they, they look fine, don't they? So... Again, this is a fabulous top. I really like it and I've worn this a few times already. It's gorgeous because it's nice and breezy and cool and I'll get loads of wear out of it and I will definitely, definitely make that again as well. And the next top I have to show you is one that I made on the spur of the moment and it's very similar to the Bakerloo, I think, by... Nina Lee, very similar to the Bakerloo, but it's actually new look. It's a new look pattern. New look 6707, I believe the number is, but I will leave a link to it down below and I'll put the name of it on screen so you can have a little look. And yes, I decided to make this, and again, Martin's ironed this, so please, no judgment here, okay? Um, this is the blouse here. It's got this gorgeous collar, which is not very... Not very well pressed at the minute, but it's got this gorgeous collar with like this fluted detail around and the collar goes all the way around the back. It's a button up front and again, I just use some very plain, gorgeously expensive plastic buttons from my stash. Um, three quarter length sleeves, which are poofy and gathered into a little bound cuff there. And this fabric is from All Your Textiles. It's a gorgeous, um, a gorgeous cotton lawn that I was gifted to make something up with and I will let you into a secret, I still haven't taken photos of myself in this, so don't tell them please. Um, anyway, the um, pink fabric here is actually a viscose crepe that I had in my stash, which I thought gave a nice contrast for the collar and it's really pretty. Again, I should have lengthened this, I didn't, but you get the idea. Um, I need to take photos of this, of myself in it and um yeah get those up on instagram what i did as well was i bound the facing inside with some pink bias binding and stuck a little fabulous label in just to remind me when i'm feeling not so fabulous that we are aren't we if we can sew our own clothes i think that makes us pretty fabulous doesn't it 
So yeah, love this top, really like it, not my usual style and I will be honest, it does feel a little bit, I don't know, a little bit prim and proper I guess, but I wear it with my black trousers and I actually really like it. So um, the fabric's gorgeous, as I say, it's just a cotton lawn, really, really nice, lovely and soft and breathable. And then we move on to the So Frugal Challenge. There was a couple of challenges in March that I wanted to take part in. One of them was the So Frugal 22. The other one was the So Yellow Friendo. And I did take part in them, but didn't get them finished because illness, what else can I say? However, um, one of the projects that I did make does fit the So Frugal Challenge 22 um requirements i guess but i didn't actually enter it in the end because i just ran out of time and um yeah i was just too ill but i wanted to make a little vest top and you might remember that i made my daughter the rio ringer tea by true bias i made it made it in some really lovely sausage dog jersey fabric that i got from croft mill i think it was and I had some scraps of it left over and I decided to make myself a little vest top, which is this here. How cute is that? This does come in other colorways actually, but it's just a cotton jersey. And I just used plain back jersey ribbon that was in my stash. And yeah, it's got like slightly racer back style. That's the back there, hopefully you can see that. I put the ribbing on using my cover stitch machine and it's cropped. This is the free, this is a free pattern. It is the Sylvan Top or Dress by Mood Society. I will leave it down below for you. It's a great pattern. It will, it took me probably about 30 minutes to sew this up. Super quick. And I'm going to make loads of these for the summer because I think they'll be great with shorts and skirts. And um, yeah, it's going to be a staple and it's a free pattern. So I absolutely love it. I think it's great. And um, yeah, there's going to be loads more of those, definitely. But I got this probably out of about 70 centimetres of fabric. And uh, yeah, you don't need much at all. So that probably fits the remit for the So Frugal challenge, but I didn't end up entering it all the same. And then my So Yellow for Endo entry was going to be the Nina Lee Portobello trousers. And I had this pattern in my stash for a while. And I think I might have mentioned that I wanted to change the zip because the, the zip in that pattern is a, is a back zip and it's an invisible zip. And I always think invisible zips in trousers, it's a little bit worrying because they're not the most um, secure zips out there rather but I ended up where I just wanted to get these made so this is the resulting trousers here again I haven't got any pictures of me wearing these so you're just going to have to see them but this is a viscose twill fabric that I bought from Lush Cloth and it's in this gorgeous mustard with red and white flowers on I love it it's just awesome and the Nina Lee Portobello trousers are a wide leg trouser very relaxed fit with a waistband and of course they have pockets in because they all have pockets in dover let's face it they've got pleats at the front you're not going to see those very well and at the back they have a couple of darts with a button and invisible zip fastening wide legged as you can see and I think I made the size 12, I made the straight size 12 in these trousers and the waist is a little bit big. They're supposed to hit on the natural waist, but they are, um, they do drop down more onto my high hip to be honest. So I think when I make these again, everywhere else they fit perfectly, but when I make these again, I'm going to just grade down to the size 10 waist, but keep the size 12 everywhere else. It's a lovely pattern, what can I say? I enjoyed making them. I didn't make any other alterations to the pattern pieces at all, apart from lengthening them like I always have to do. And yeah, I'm just sorry that I haven't got pictures of me in these, but I will tart myself up at some point and show you pictures of them. And I will put a picture of the pattern itself here. There's some fabulous versions of these out there and it's a really good pattern. I can highly recommend it. So that was going to be my entry for the So Yellow for Endo Challenge, but as I say, I was too ill to take the photos and enter it. So I made them, you know, it's fine. And then the last item that I've got to show you today is another pair of trousers. And 
this was my little bit of selfless sewing for March because as I mentioned earlier in this vlog Martin and I are heading to Portugal for a week in a private villa oh it's going to be bliss with its own private pool overlooking the sea I am so excited um, I'm so excited because my passport came yesterday I had to reapply because it ran out during the pandemic I wasn't going to bother because we couldn't go anywhere we couldn't even leave our houses could we at one point so let alone go abroad so there was no way I was wasting money on a passport when none of us knew what the future held but you know we've moved on hopefully from all that and yeah I've been meaning to get around to ordering my new passport and knew this holiday was booked and then kept just putting it off and putting it off like you do I finally got around to it three weeks ago with like eight weeks to go really worrying thinking we've got this holiday and I haven't got a passport and anyway anyway it came yesterday which is just amazing so I can finally relax about that but I wanted to make Martin some trousers for our holiday and I decided on the classic men's pants I think they're called by wardrobe and me I'll put a picture of them here and I will leave a link to pattern down below and yes I've got a few pieces of linen in my stash and just think, you know, men in that classic sort of relaxed shirt and linen trousers, it's a lovely look, isn't it, for summer? So I made these trousers up a couple of Sundays ago and I can't remember where I got this linen from. It's just in like a beigey, light, stony colour. This pattern is fantastic. I can say that without a shadow of a doubt. I love wardrobe by me patterns. I've only made a couple of them, but yes, I love the details. They are very ready to wear styling and yeah, I really like it. So these are a elastic waisted pant, but they also have a drawstring in as well. And even with the drawstring in the elastic, you've, you do top stitching around the bottom and the top of the waistband with the channel for the elastic in between. And I just think it gives that really nice ready to wear feel. They have angled side pockets in the front. There are different options for pockets in the back. It's got a yoke on the back, which hopefully you can see there. And the other options you've got for pockets, you can have welt pockets and you can have like pockets with a flap. I just did normal patch pockets on the back because I just liked that style. And yeah, um, full length, what else can I say? So they are a lovely trouser they do have a faux faux fly on the front as well hopefully you can see that just there again we've got no photos of him in these at the minute because covid what can i say but i'm going to make him another pair i've got like a light gray color as well and i want to get there's like a shirt by wardrobe by me i will put a picture of that here or here shirt pattern which I, I want to do in like a navy um to go with these for him as well for our holiday i think that would be really nice but he's um these were very much like a wearable toile and i did have a few issues with it but that was my fault not his more the uh, not, not his <laughs> not not the pattern designer's fault or the pattern it was my fault entirely because i totally missed off the yoke pieces when i first sewed it up so i had to unstitch all the side seams and then I cut into because linen when you when you unpick it you know it's not the most strong strong fabric is it and I tore into the leg and oh my word and then when I put the placement on for the buttonholes at the waistband I put them off center so I did two buttonholes for the drawstring cord that were off center so what I did was I ended up putting another buttonhole in which is there in the middle so it's now got three buttonholes two are functional one isn't it? <laughs> but you know it's one of those things isn't it as i say i've not been well that's my excuse but what i do like about this pattern is that with the waistband you attach it on the inside first so you do it um right side to wrong side and then you flip it out and top stitch down on the right side and i really like that rather than doing it the other way because you end up with a really neat finish on the inside of the trouser and then also a really neat finish on the outside of the trouser i just think that's really nice so i think you know moving forward for any waistband that i do i'm going to do it that way i just think it looks much better so anyway these were a wearable twile he's tried them on he loves them and they fit really well so i know now that i can just make him up a few more pairs of these i think it'd be nice to do maybe a navy pair or a black pair I'm definitely going to do the gray 
and um, he will wear them because I will force him to. So I think that's everything that I wanted to show you makes wise. I have already made one, two, three things in April already. I haven't really made any plans for April because everything has just gone to pot I'll be honest you know my make nine hasn't even started yet and we're already in April <sighs> you know I had this idea didn't I those of you that watched that vlog that I would pick a pattern a month I would have a pattern I would have my fabrics every month that would be my priority for the month and it, it just hasn't happened I'm sure it will at some point later on in the year but at the minute it's just the furthest thing from my mind and then on top of that uh, you know thinking forward at the minute there's a few things in the pipeline i.e i have a wedding to go to in june the first of june it's just before our um jubilee weekend we've got a four-day bank holiday for the queen's jubilee this year and the wedding is on the on the wednesday before that i've got a wedding to go to for that so i'm planning my ideas for that which i'll probably tell you about in a separate vlog and well i'm saying i will that's if i get around to doing it and <laughs> Also, I um, you know I've got my holiday that I'm thinking about now as well, and thinking about makes for that. I've got a few things in my mind, but I'm not. I I just haven't had the time to sit and really think about what I want to make. I've been much more spontaneous, so I'm not sure this month I will get round to filming a plans vlog for April. I think it's just going to be a suck it and see, and um, we'll see what we end up with really. But that's 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 just how it is at the minute. Um. Later on in the year, I am planning, I've got a really heavy couple of months at the minute. Um, May's going to be quite relaxed in some respects because I've got two holidays, so to speak, what with going down to the Isle of Wight and then also going to Portugal. And then I've got a really heavy June and then July, it's going to change. Um, those of you that have been following me a while will know that I left my employed job at the end of January and I've just been inundated with work since and I've taken on too much. I think it was a bit of a case of going self-employed. I didn't know what my work situation would be like and it was a case of making hay while the sun shines and I've sort of realised in my line of work at the minute that the sun is always shining and uh, there is a lot of hay, hay, hay being made and there's not a lot of social time and one of the reasons I left my employed job was because I wanted to have more time for me and I've got even less of that at the minute and yeah it's not sustainable this long term and you know I do want to be putting a lot more into sewing and my channel and I've got a lot of plans moving forward for how I want to slowly over time um, do more with sewing to try and turn it into a source of income for me as I get older and less of the treadmill of work. Um, but you know, that's longer term aspirations, I guess. And I've got some thoughts in my mind, but at the minute it's a case of, I've just got to get my head down, get through this next couple of months. And then I will be having a lot more free time where you will hopefully see lots more from me and more sew alongs, more hints and tips and there'll be hopefully more lives etc which brings me to my live so this month i have put the options up in the facebook group if you're not part of that facebook group what i'm going to do is put it up in the community tab part of my channel here so you can have a look the planned date is actually only a week away is it yeah it's a week on saturday because again it is the only night that i've got available to do it in april i think it's the 16th but i'll put I'll put the date across the bottom and this month we are going to be making a easy breezy summer dress and the reason for that is obviously because I'm going on holiday in March no May and I'm gonna to have to edit some of this out going on holiday in May and I you know that kind of thing is going to be really wearable for me I appreciate that the patterns that I've chosen will not be to everybody's taste and I totally understand that it's never going to be is it let's face it we all have so many wide and varied tastes but so far these live so longs have consisted of a christmas party dress we've had a hoodie we've had a, a nice shirt we've had what have we just had another blouse oh yes my last blouse we'll talk about that in a minute because i've not finished it yet um and i thought this month it would be nice to do um a dress so 
that's that's what this month's so long is going to be so i will leave the um the details of that down in the description box below and also in the community tab but you can also vote in my facebook group if you're part of that as well and the choices are the Chalk and Notch Marcel dress, the Olive by Untitled Thoughts and also the Saltwater Slip dress by Friday Pattern Company. And yeah, at the moment it looks like the Saltwater Slip dress is winning. So, you know, if you want to change that, you've got your opportunity now to go and vote. And yeah, that will be our next live so long on the 16th, I think, at 6pm and yes the other pattern that i haven't mentioned is the one that we just sewed up in my last vlog when you last saw me which was the anastasia blouse by la pivette which again is a free pattern and we got a lot of that done during the sew along but we didn't finish it and i think i always knew that we wouldn't finish it during the sew along because it, it's a lot more of an involved make and I know that a few people asked me if I would film the remainder of making of that blouse and then put that up as a separate vlog, which I am planning to do. I've just not been well enough to film it um, and haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. So I have put it to one side. I know that loads of you have actually finished it because I've seen the pictures and they are amazing. You might just see Piper has just come in. Martin's just got back from taking him for, for a walk. Um, oh, there we go. Hello. Did you enjoy your walk? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this was such a professional vlog as well. And <laughs> come on, Piper. Oh, bless him. He's just come back from his walk. Did you enjoy your walk? Did you have fun? Was it really? I oh, know. I know. All right. Okay. So yes, as I was saying, the Anastasia was never going to get done in that sew along and I haven't had time yet to finish it so I have put it to just one side and as soon as I've got a little bit of spare time I will get the remainder of that blouse filmed and put up as, as a part two to the sew along so that those of you that that haven't made the blouse and want to see that and that sort of finishing off process can watch that at your leisure so I think I'm going to end it there, guys, for tonight. I've got loads to do. Um, and uh, yes, Piper's just come to say goodbye. So I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. <laughs> oh, never work with animals. And I will look forward to seeing you all again really soon. Take care. Bye.